Let's get this baby opened up. If you're not threatening to unseat your memory module, send them skipping across the yard. You ain't doing it right. Okay, we got all the dust blown out of the case. Now we're gonna open up these and see what's inside. Let's start with this adapter that adapts this NVMe drive to a PCI X4 slot. So first impressions, tape. I like tape. Unmolested tape means that you've got an exponentially greater possibility that the contents haven't been returned, are complete, and not destroyed. Plus the box still has its more or less cuboid shape. Actually it's perfect. Let's take the unprecedented step of going in the back door here. It's got one of those little flappy things, so which is great until it's got tape on it. Get your fingernail in there, of which I don't have a ton. Pop these little things loose, maybe. So you don't destroy the box. In case I have to return it, I don't want to make a mess of it. Oh, a little tabby thing in there. This is some special packaging. Now I know why it costs so much. Let me use this screwdriver to get this little screwdriver out. Comes a little, little screwdriver. Yeah, mine might be kind of too big. I'm pretty impressed so far. So yeah, that little screws holding on, which is good. That's what I was hoping for. So let's take this apart because obviously we can't get inside. So let me say before I get rolling here, this is not a review because I've never used this device. And I'll be happy to tell you what I think of it as I go. So this is basically a, an adapter that allows you to put an NVMe drive into a PCIe slot. I should say that most newer motherboards, if you don't have an NVMe drive, most newer motherboards have a slot on it for them or two, but they normally use some SATA port resources. So keep that in mind if you have a lot of drives like I do. I'm going to lose these. Am I going to lose these? Probably. And it comes with a few different thicknesses. Okay, that's cool. So these are the heat sink thermal pads so that it can do its job. So I give you three of them so you can probably stack them if you need to or pick which one works best with your drive. The card itself looks pretty interesting. I paid about 18 bucks for this. You can get them for around 10, but they either don't have a heat sink or it's this cheesy one that's held on with these little wide rubber bands that I don't see lasting forever. The moment you've all been waiting for, the NVMe drive, I don't like that, but mm, more tape. Plus it has a little window on the back so that you can peek in there and see that your precious cargo is still on board. I guess we'll go in from the top. Nothing else in the box. A little obligatory massive packet. So we'll leave this hermetically sealed from the factory. No tape on it. So that's it right there. This little stick of gum. So NVMe stands for Non-Volatile Memory Express. Ah, this little tag. Get in there. Gonna know you look weird. Let's see what we got here. So those of you that think you could run this without a heat sink. You might be able to. You might stay within whatever the specs call for. I don't know what it is on this one, but I want to say it's around 70 C. But heat kills electronics, so I would not recommend running one of these without a heat sink. So those of you that are contemplating cheaping out with a $9 adapter and expecting your drive to live a long time, I wouldn't recommend it. See that little groove on the standoff? So this notch slides in that little groove. Come on, focus for me. Thank you. We need to plug this in over here. You can see it's keyed. Card's keyed and the receptacle's keyed. So we need to take this off first. So we'll take this all the way off. 
Ooh, another teeny little screw we can lose. Careful with this screw because I'll bet you a dollar to a donut your little box of PC screws isn't going to have one of these in it. The standoff too, don't lose this. It's very tiny. Plug the card into here. So then the standoff, that little groove we looked at before, I can't really show you because I can barely hold this thing in my meat hook here. This one's a very tight fit. I expected it to be much looser. Seems to line up perfectly. And now, this is the tricky part, getting the screw on the thing because we weren't prepared. Don't cross thread it. We've all done it. Don't look at me like that. I know you've done it. Cross threaded screw is a tight screw. And then tighten it down until you hear a cracking noise. No, don't. Don't try it down that way. Okay, that's it. We're pretty much there. All right, so we're going to figure out the heat sink thermal padding debacle neck. This sits on here like that. Let's put the thick one on. Yeah, I think we use the thick one. Now you got to do this miracle chore. Apologize if my focus is wonky. There's some schmoo. This stuff's kind of a weird consistency. Okay, so we're going to put this over the device. We'll press it down. Hopefully it'll stay on here. Peel off the other side. If it comes off, I think it does. Yep. Yeah, it's not sticky. So hopefully that will stay on there long enough for us to set this in the heat sink. So we'll make sure we're clean. Flip this over. Try to get it right the first time. Don't screw this up. It's tempting. Not a watch. It'll stick like glue to this thing. So make sure you get this right. So the screw, while it's pretty flush, is a little bit proud. And this has little divots in there. This is a little thick, but I'd rather have it thicker than not. You can see me struggle with this little screw. I don't want you to miss that. You barely got any magnetism. More or less like my personality. And the older you get, the harder it is to deal with teeny tiny little stuff. Actually, we got it all the way tight. I just mushed the heck out of it with my fingers. That's how I roll. Well, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So far, I gotta say, this Sabrent uh, unit, I'm pretty impressed with it. Fit and finish is outstanding. It's actually machined aluminum. Oops. Nice coating on the board, nice traces, no bodges, good silk screening. For now, if it just works, we'll be golden. We'll save these, even though we'll never use them in 100 years and we'll probably forget what they're for. Nonetheless, going in the PC scrappy boxy. Okay, let's get out the box and we'll rock. First thing first, a word on grounding. I know some of you out there are going to be going, where's your anti-static mat and your groundy nerd strappy wrist thing? Well, I don't have one. So the trick we used to use is you take your power cord and you just plug that in and you make sure it's plugged into the wall. But of course you don't turn the unit on, but you touch the metal part of the chassis or the power supply before you reach in there and start doing stuff. That way any static you have is going to be grounded all the way back to your electrical service panel ground bar. First thing we want to do, we're going to go for this X4 slot here at the bottom. That's what this needs. You're not going to be able to run one of these in an X1 slot. So make sure you got at least an X4. It'll run in an X4, an X8, or an X16. So first thing I want to do is make sure the little keeper is open. And then these cards are keyed. And since it's an X4, we're only using the last two sets of pins here. So key is on that side, the rear of the case. So it only goes that way. So the heat sink fins are going to be facing downward. So you just put it in between there, slot it in, and push it down until that little keeper clicks. And now you're locked in. So basically that's it. All the hard part was basically assembling the NVMe into the adapter. We're going to go ahead and boot up for the first time. Get into the BIOS and see if everything's showing up here. And there's the post beat. And delete to get into the BIOS. Okay. So we just want to cruise over here to peripherals. Uh, NVMe configuration. See if she shows up. And there it is. There's our new drive. 2 terabyte WD Black SN770, 2000 .3 gigabyte. So it sees it. That's good. Now we can go ahead and escape out of here. Exit without saving. We'll go ahead and boot into Windows. A couple things we need to do before we can use that drive. If we look at our file explorer, this PC, you can see the drive doesn't show up here. So what we need to do to get that drive to show up is we need to initialize it. So we go right click our start button, go up to disk management, 
click that. Okay, now we have to initialize the disk, disk three. They can use uh, either the old school MBR or the new and hip uh, GPT that all the kids are using these days uh, without getting into a lot of details. Basically, GPT gives you the ability to have more than four partitions so you can hide stuff better, more better. And you also have to use it if you have a disk larger than two terabytes. So we're just gonna leave it on that. Other than that, it doesn't really make a difference. I think it DPT boots just a tiny bit quicker, but whatever. So we're gonna click OK. Okay, now we're gonna roll down to disk three. And you can see that we've got our disk here, unallocated space. So we need to right click that. We're gonna call a new simple volume. There's a wizard, that makes it easier. Simple volume size, okay, yeah, I don't wanna change it. We're just gonna go for the whole thing. And we are gonna name it D because that is a partition that I deleted before. So I'm gonna assign it there to D, next, file system NTFS. Everything else can stay default, unless you wanna do something crazy, finish. Now it shows up. If you want to name it, which I will, you just right click and go down to properties. And then right there where it says new volume, you put your name in there. I'm just going to go WD uh, NVM. If you're going to hot swap, especially make sure and give your volumes a drive letter. So then all you got to do is hit apply and then okay. So now when we look at this PC, we can see our new drive right there. So now we're good to go. So I got all my SATA ports are used. The onboard NVMe connector on this particular motherboard uses resources from SATA port one. So you can't use it for a physical drive after that. So that's pretty much it. Now we will actually see how fast it is. Okay, so now we've got Crystal Disk Mark open and we're gonna test the speed of our new drive and make sure that it's pouring the coals to it. So a D drive, brand new drive, and we need to choose NVMe SSD from the settings. And now we hit all, and see this baby rock. While the speed test is running, a quick word on PCI versions and transfer speeds. PCI versions are backward compatible, but that means that this new 4.0 drive will work fine in my pre-pandemic 3.0 Relic rig. So if you don't have the latest and greatest, it doesn't really matter. This is still going to work all the way back to PCIe version 1, although it's not going to be as fast. So the good news there is that when I upgrade this rig, this new drive can migrate to my new box and run faster. So it's when when unlike my collection of old useless memory modules we all got a stack of those am i right so yeah you can see that's pretty spicy so if you're like me and you've used up all your sata ports then this is an option to get some more onboard storage so anyways i hope you guys learned something and i'm hoping some of you actually didn't know this was possible and learned something new i hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope it uh, helps you somewhere down the road thanks for watching i really appreciate it catch you on the next one